everybody, John Brown with you here again today, and today I will be reviewing, this way, Catacombs. Not the most interesting cover art ever, seeing as if you look at this cover, you probably have no idea what this game is about. This game is kind of a dungeon delve. Uh, you've, you've got um, different characters, you've got you know your wizard, your uh, thief, your barbarian, and your elf archer going into a dungeon. But it's done in quite a different way. It's done by flicking discs. It's a dexterity game that is a dungeon crawl. Um, it's a very unique game, definitely. Even though the cover of the box doesn't really show us what's going on, let's take a look at how to play the game and um, you know, what I think about it. Right, I do apologize for doing this part as a handheld part, be it it's really difficult to kind of show everything I want to show. Um, but this is kind of the board we're going to be playing on. There are three different two-sided boards of varying art quality that we will be flicking our discs around. Now, if we want to look real quickly at our characters, we have the elf, who basically is a special action, instead of simply doing a melee attack. Like most characters, when they do a melee attack, we're simply going to flick the character and hope we hit an enemy. The elf has arrows that she can use and fire them from a distance to hold her current position. Now we'll talk about the wizard last. The barbarian has the most health and a special ability. Everyone has a special action they can do uh, a certain number of times, depending on the character or any other abilities that they've gained, where you can do a chain attack, an attack with four melee attacks in a row. This is the symbol for a melee attack in, in the most health. The thief can basically move and then attack. Um, also, the thief gets more gold when they land a killing blow on something. The wizard has an entire deck of spells, and these different um, discs that we have here in the wizard, you know, like this is a big shield the wizard can put out. The wizard can do a fireball. Of course you have to have a magic missile attack. They can summon a skeleton. And they have other abilities that they can do in the game. So, now, once they use a card, though, then that card is gone. To play the game, we're going to have all of these cards flipped face down, only the top one is going to be face up. And basically, this is the first room we're going to be entering, and it'll show us what monster is going to be in there and what uh, map we're going to play on. These different backgrounds represent the different possible rooms. The question marks, that is the character. I uh, will have enemies in that room depending on what scenario we're playing, based on base the, the end bad person we're trying to face. We'll face two rooms, we'll then we'll go to a merchant. The merchant basically will give us randomly certain items that we can buy for our characters. Uh, we individually get gold when we kill enemies, and we can uh, give other players gold to help them get items too, since it is a cooperative versus a dungeon master sort of game. So the players can choose work to work together, or they can choose to keep their money if they want. And then face some level 1 rooms, then we have a chance to heal up, basically, and pay some gold to get back some life, a level 2 room, and then the Catacomb Lord. Now here's a pile of room cards, so room variety is definitely not a problem. And also we can see there is a big deck of, there's one of those, but a big deck of different monsters we can face, and the monsters actually have different abilities. They also have either these small discs for quite a few different monsters, or these large discs. Um, some, like I said, the different monsters have different abilities. So whenever we go into a room, we can lay out the cards of the monsters we're going to face. So if we were facing a zombie in a room, so we can reference what they're like, basically a zombie has one hit point, can do one melee attack, and is worth 100 gold for defeating them. Now if we look at, say, a centaur, they have two health, or with 200 gold, they do a melee attack and then a range attack with those small yellow discs. Now some monsters are worth up to 300 gold. Here we see a Cerberus. It does a melee attack, and then it does two range attacks. And one of the things that uh, you might be wondering is how do you keep track of a monster's health? Well, if they've taken a damage, we can simply flip them over to show that they have taken one damage. We're going to see there are four different possible you know, end bosses for the game. They're basically going to determine the difficulty level for a game and how the final room is going to look, what monsters are going to be in it, so on and so forth. Describes any special abilities they have, how they work, and it shows anytime you see a question mark on a room card what monster is going to be in there. Now at the start of the game, basically the monsters start behind this white line and whoever is controlling them decides they're set up. The players start behind this line and a combat round is each player taking in 
no particular order. They can choose each round. It is a cooperative game, and they decide how best to take turn order to take an action, either a regular attack or one of their special attacks as, or special abilities, as long as they have them. And if I were to be able to hit two monsters in an attack, I do damage to both of those monsters. If I knock a monster into another monster, that does not count as damage. After the players are done with their turn, the enemy player can attack, doing damage. Whoever's controlling the enemy can decide in what order the monsters want to attack. And they keep track of the damage to the players. And then a room is defeated once all the monsters in a room have been defeated. Two other components I didn't mention. The money here is... Um, it's okay. Um, it's not paper money. It does have some thickness to it. So it's functional. I mean, it doesn't look fantastic, but it works. And here's the rule book. It's a relatively small rule book. And I found in general, you know, there, there are some pictures and examples, and it's pretty well laid out. Um, I want to mention uh, the components first. Um, one negative. First of all, there are some cool boards, like uh, this board you know, it, it's pretty simple, but kind of interesting looking, and then there's a back to it, just kind of a stone thing. And then there's this terrible green thing that I don't... looks like crumpled up paper, maybe? And I don't know, this... like... It, it's kind of interesting that the different boards um, it kind of vary in quality, none of them are really that great. They do have the, the holes in them, and be, but because they're double-sided, those you know, blocking things, the, those black thick round discs that you can bounce off or whatever in each room are going to vary because on the other side, the uh, the area where the players start will be on the opposite end of those blocking discs. So each side of the board does actually play a little bit differently. It's not just the artwork on it. Uh, so, the, so the artwork, not too great on the boards, but it is well done that they're double-sided and, and it works well to have those different blocking things. Other, you know, they are, you know, pillars in an indoor thing, or stalactites or stalagmites, whichever one is the floor and the ceiling one, I don't remember. But, you know, they provide obstacles, and, you know, it, it's, so they're not bad. The, the money isn't great, but okay. Uh, however, the, um, the iconography is really good. Um, you know, the, the cards make sense, the players make sense, the, the artwork, you know, black and white characters, so it, it's not fantastic, but, but it is pretty functional, and the rule book is pretty good. There's a lot of cool wooden discs. You know, yeah, you have to sticker a lot, a lot of things, but, you know, there is a lot of wood in the game, so components are kind of a mixed bag. Some kind of not so great things, but, but overall pretty decent, um, and everything's functional. There, there's nothing that's just like, oh, this is terrible. It's just, it's not very pretty in some cases. Okay, first I'm going to do what I really like about the game. Um, I really like when a game blends mechanisms with theme really well. And it's pretty neat that, you know, the Barbarian uh, has a lot of health and he can do that chain attack. But after he does it, he's exhausted, basically can't do anything in the next round. But he can potentially finish off a room. And there's actually quite a bit of tension with that, you know, like, oh, it, you know, I can do four attacks. This guy has two health, this one has one. If I can hit him twice and him, you know, we can, we can beat it you know, beat this room, great, but then you don't do it, and now you're incapacitated, and they can hit you, you know, the the player who's kind of the overlord, if you will. Um, you know, four different bosses um, that make the snares a little bit different. Um, they are very different. The rules for how the bosses work are very different. Um, so the mechanisms of the, the characters, like this Cerberus, it, you know, can do an attack, and then it's almost like the other two heads hit, I guess. Um, the, the way that just flicking discs and attacking, you know, as heroes and as monsters are integrated to who the characters are, what they do, especially the wizard and all their different spells, it's actually really well, it's kind of brilliant how well they blend uh, mechanisms with the different monsters and, uh, you know, end boss and the different characters in the game. So bravo for that. Um, one thing, now I'm getting into this, some of the downfalls a little bit, if you're playing with four people, you need, or five people, each one can pick a hero, then you have an overlord, you have to play with all four, though, because that's how the game is balanced, though, so you can't go in with, like, two heroes, so there, you know, there isn't that var variability in the scenarios or anything like that, so some people, if you don't have the right number, are going to have to play multiple people, um, and the wizard is so cool, I mean, deciding when to use a spell, like, if you're playing with some maybe younger gamers, maybe you don't want to give them the wizard. Maybe you do, because it'd be fun. But the complexity that the wizard has compared to the other characters is so different, and um, the abilities they have are, are so much more interesting, in my opinion, that I think that's kind of a downfall, that playing the wizard is kind of like, you know, 
a, a really cool thing as opposed to, all, all the characters are cool, but The Witcher is so much cooler than everybody else as far as gameplay goes. Um, what do I think about the game overall? There's a good deal of variety in the rooms, even though you're kind of doing the same thing. And it's a really interesting concept to do a dungeon crawl dexterity game mix. And I just said I thought the mechanisms, mechanisms were brilliant the way they did it. I like how they are blending the theme and the mechanisms. That's usually something I'm big on. And yet, this is not one of my favorite games. Um, I think I'm going to title this uh, on the Board Game Geek, uh, The Uncanny Valley of um, Dungeon Delve. So if you haven't heard of The Uncanny Valley, it's kind of if you're designing something and you're making it look more and more realistic or maybe more human, um, it becomes more and more pleasing the more expressive it is, you know, if it has eyebrows, if it has... and then as it gets close to being realistic, um, people suddenly find it um, not all that appealing or almost creepy at this, and, and then eventually it goes back to being appealing again. And that dip in where people are like, hmm, I don't know about that, um, it, it is considered the uncanny valley, and I feel like that's kind of where this game hits, because, well, is it this fun beer and pretzel game? Is it this serious game? And, and you're taking it seriously and you're into it, and and yet it's this flicky dexterity game. And I feel almost like I'd prefer something like a Rampage or something like that, um, where, uh, and I haven't, I haven't played it, but I've seen it, where it's just a fun straight up game. Um, or a game like Crokinole, where, where it's just based on the flicking. This game also has the Overlord versus Everybody mechanism that I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. Now, I love Descent because Descent's a good enough game that I can get over that. I think I might like uh, Level 7 Omega Protocol from what I've seen of it. But but it's not a mechanism that's my favorite in the first place. It has that working against it, some of the art design, and, and just that feeling where I just don't find the game as enjoyable as I think I should because, in my opinion, there, there's kind of two different main fun things in... in uh, board games for me. It can be playing a game like Mage Knight or um, Trajan or um, Terra Mystica where I'm grinding the whole time and figuring out what to do and that's fun for for some people. It's not fun but, but I can enjoy that as much as I can enjoy a game where we're just being silly and you know a game like Car uh, Cars Sorry Sliders and Flipping Around. Both of those are very enjoyable in very different ways and I feel like this game kind of tries to blend those two and it just doesn't quite work for me. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I've played bad games, trust me. And um, one thing I really try to do on this channel is try to give you, you know, a, as much as a objective perspective as I can. And one or two people commented, like, on my Pathfinder video, hey, you know, thanks for pointing out, you know, good job pointing out both the, the good and the bad of it. And you can have apologists for Pathfinder saying it's great. People will say it's terrible. You just flip over and go and see what you do. And I can see both perspectives. Pathfinder is a game I liked. I could see why some people wouldn't, and I'm not being apologist for it. I can see why some people don't like it. And this is a game that I don't particularly like, but could see why some people could. The way they do the mechanisms is brilliant. It, it's great. It, it, it's, it's amazing how well that works for what they were going for. But that kind of in-between being thinky and, and fun and silly just doesn't quite hit for me. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. This could be a good game, it's just not for me. But if you're looking for something, you know, it's a dungeon dub with all the minutia of rules of descent, if you if you like the idea of kind of in-between being that thinky and fun that can be beer and pretzels and serious sort of game, this game really could be for you, especially if you like that Overlord versus that one mechanism. All right, just a reminder, if you're checking me out on Board Game Geek, be sure to check out my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if there's a way to see Board Game Geek subscribers, but I can definitely see it on YouTube. Um, I started doing this just for fun, but I'm really enjoying it. I want to keep doing it. And, you know, if I can, if you can spread the word, I can get some support. Maybe I can eventually improve video quality, the editing, or whatever that I do. Um, and it's something I'm really enjoying and, and getting a decent amount of support. So please uh, let other people know about it. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. And let me know if you have any suggestions, games you'd like to see. Um, I, this this episode, I tried to do a little bit more talking about the game, less explaining, uh, if you like that or whatever. So um, thanks a lot for your support so far, and hopefully we'll keep growing. Up to 25 subscribers and 3,300 views, so want to keep going with that and see what we can do. So thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.